Well, good morning, our beloved. So how many of you can feel a different flow? It's not better or worse by definition, just different, meaning that the flow is easier and more fluid, even where you are dealing with harder moments in life? Do you feel less resistance as you're moving through your choices, your opportunity, your experiences? And how many of you are beginning to feel moments of bliss and ease and ease and bliss? And what does that feel like? If you had to stop and describe to someone what flow looks and feels like how you experience. What would that be? Does that make sense? You all get so stuck in my life is good or bad. I like my life. I love my life. I hate my life. But how many of you simply describe your life as having flow or the lack of flow? The fact is that life consists of contrast. You've got the shadow and the light, the dark and the brightness. You have pain and suffering and joy and bliss. There are so many emotions that you prefer over others, and that is natural. That is humanity's journey here to figure out what they prefer and why. But how many of you really acknowledge and focus on and appreciate what the flow looks and feels like? Now, many of you have had moments where it feels good, but then also moments where it doesn't. But have you ever thought about when you transition or someone whom you love transitions? How would you like to experience that? While it is a very sad or momentous event for many, it still can be appreciated from a space of flow, one where you just naturally transition versus transitioning in chaotic moments. Does that make sense? In one, there is flow, and in the other, it is more disjointed, though they both get you to that end result. So our goal and our purpose today is to have you focus less on the specifics of the events in your lives and to focus on the flow and to really embrace what flow feels like and what it doesn't so that you can release the resistance that you hold in your own bodies to allow the flow to come in. And the flow at the end of the day is simply surrender. And once you stop resisting the movements or the moments in your life, the more you can just trust that each moment has purpose and to allow it to unfold then to show you and to teach you and to prove to you that being in the flow simply feels better than being in resistance. And once humanity can learn that particular lesson, it will shift the way that you literally and figuratively experience life. Finding you in this journey called your life means or expresses itself as finding the flow. Where is your life naturally flowing towards? And just allow it to go there. When we bring you specific experiences or moments Try not to question them too much. Why is this happening? Where is this going? And instead say, well, okay, let's see where this takes me. I may not like it, but at least I'm open to what the expression is and what the 
moment can bring forth. And when you are open with curiosity about what are we, the spirit team, bringing you, even in moments of pain, you can then begin to understand the purpose of your life. The purpose of your life is not to be eternally happy. The purpose of your life here is to explore and to expand into what you came to experience. And if you came in to experience moments of cancer, how do you embrace that experience, leaning into what this is to teach you instead of simply fearing the worst outcome? It's so much more than you realize. And again, it's not about being right or wrong, doing it well or not doing it well, being loved or being punished, or somehow regretting your past life's choices. It is simply about being in the now, in the here and the now, and expanding into the next what if. And that, our beloveds, starts with flow. Flow is where you let go of the need to control or to overanalyze or even to overpredict where your life is going to go. Our another is a perfect example. We have a tendency to work with her when she overmasticates over those things in life. What does this mean? What am I supposed to do with it? And we've just asked her, just let go. Let go of all of your queries. Let go of all of your curiosities and worries in that sense and just say, okay, I'm just going to be open to this experience and to see where it leads me. And we can tell you for her, instead of overthinking and overanalyzing, everything that she goes through, every moment, every singular moment. She's just actually just present, being present and being appreciative of what we're bringing her because right now it feels so amazing. And in appreciating that she is worthy of being treated well and being loved and being told all these wonderful affirmations, she's beginning to just flow into what it feels like to be loved instead of questioning, is this a narcissist? Is he trying to take advantage of me? What's going to go wrong here? Can you understand? Even in those moments of bliss, for those of you who have been programmed that you are not worthy, you need to let go of what it feels like to be happy, to enjoy the moment without any expectation of the other shoe dropping. So while you were thinking it was, oh, when you're in the negative experiences and not going into the flow, Well, for many of you, our beloveds, it's also when things are going well. You don't trust that it will continue to go well. But what if it does? What if it does? Go in with discernment. Don't be blindly faithful, if you will. Use common sense and logic. But when your measurement of success is based on past failures, well, that's not going to work very well for you. So instead, say, what am I feeling? Is it tied to this person's or this experience's moment? Or is it based on past fears and subjugations that I have gone through? So finding the flow is in both the good and the bad, as you would define it from our perspective. It's simply energy here to teach you to release and relax into what your soul most desires next in order to grow into the most wholesome version of you, which will require contrast. But much contrast can be on the positive side. And if you get out of demanding and expecting and instead move into appreciation and gratitude, you will find that even your high moments shift into a different way of experiencing them because your vibration will approach it with curiosity versus expectation of what this is meant to look and feel like. And beginning the day with that type of a mindset is so much more helpful because it allows the grace of your life to come in. And it is the grace of your life which offers you the greatest appreciation for everything that you experience, good, bad, negative, positive, loving, hurtful, everything. 
their lessons and everything. And as our another is learning, being loved properly is also a lesson when you haven't been loved properly before because it feels really, really fucking scary because you don't think, you don't know, you've never really known true love because you were denying yourself through restrictions and restricted beliefs, thereby blocking or rejecting certain experiences because you needed to experience the contrast first before you could fully move into loving experiences because the vibrational mismatch misaligns those types of people. And when you do your inner work, your inner healing, your inner trauma review, and then finally moving into an expectation of all is well, all is well, in spite of everything, offering gratitude and appreciation and love for all that you have gone through, therein lies the vibration to call in the next lesson, which may for some of you be the most loving experience that you have ever had. But even within that contrast will be contrast because how do you allow somebody to love you when you have never been loved before? How do you allow somebody to appreciate you when you've never been appreciated before? And how do you learn to trust somebody when those whom you have trusted before were not trustworthy? And therein lies the next journey of moving into the age of Aquarius, finding love within the safe spaces without having to change anyone, but just being you and allowing that to attract the most perfect partner to teach you what love really does feel like or should feel like or is feeling like in this moment. And then just beginning to relax into that because that, our beloveds, is how you heal your nervous system by being reinforced by another on what love really looks and feels like in contrast to what you have thought that it was. And therein, we will offer you this this beautiful blooming lotus that floats on a water that is still filled with toxic environmental pesticides. Those that are designed to kill off everything that is probiotic or biotic or human. And you can find this within the most toxic places if you believe that it's there. But you must believe, you must trust, and you must relax and release into this energetic imprint. And when you do, you will find it. You will find the flow and appreciate it in a way that you never have because each of you are seeking your partner, whether it is in a lover, in a friend, in a partnership. It doesn't matter. Each of you is seeking you outside of yourselves now in order to find the mirror or the match of who you desire to be when you are the most evolved. And for some of you, you're just getting your mirror matches, which are quite toxic because that is a true reflection of where you are still at. And there's no judgment and there's no shame. It's just an acknowledgement of I'm looking in the mirror and hmm, I guess this is what I still look like. And then letting go and moving on. So find your bliss, your peace, and your flow in this everlasting thing called life. And so it is. Namaste.